Yes, we can see you. Hello, Kyle. Hi. How you doing, everyone? Oh, you're a little, you're a little, little, your little uh, frames are missing. You're a little really? silly. We can hear you fine, though. That'll be f Yeah, it's not the best webcam, but yeah. Anytime okay. we move fast, frames go away. You're the Flash! <laughs> I'm not nearly enough like the situation to be the Flash. <laughs> Kyle, thank you for helping <laughs> us out tonight. Um, you are very busy lately, aren't you? Oh my god, yes. I am drowning in my own work. I... So much is going on. I'm so behind schedule. Everything is just living and breathing this stupid idea about time travel and whatever. You're making a movie. Quit your bitching. I'm Jesus making a Christ. short film for my master's thesis. Yes. You're making a movie. Y yes, I am. In fact, I'm auditioning actors this weekend. See? That's yes. fucking awesome. Oh, my God. I'm I'm terrified. Why are you terrified? Because I've never made a movie before. It's a big thing. There are all these little, little cogs and uh, sprockets that have to go on to place, or otherwise you end up um, at birdemic level stuff. Ten years ago, they gave three schmucks a camera and a, half a map and threw them out in the woods, and they came back and made ten million fucking dollars. I think you'll be fine. And we are the result of that generation. Yeah, we are, aren't we? Yeah. Always historicize, always historicize. So tonight we have got some interesting stuff. We're going to start with a couple follow ups to previous stories. I kind of wish Tara was here for the first one, but uh, sequels. There are sequels to this show. Oh, God, there's always the, the people you just when you think. I mean, I knew there were variations on a theme. I didn't know there were sequels. Mm. We've got some follow ups. So let's uh, let's okay. get started. Each week, Catherine goes out on the worldwide interwebs. Finds all sorts of horrible stuff, brings it back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong With You? And this time, I don't know what I like. No, I, I don't know art, but I know what I like. And I'm not sure I like this, but it is fucking amazing. Okay. This is becoming, I think the last time this happened was in England. Now it has come to American shores, it's it's spreading. I think. Um, let me get your send you this, ladies and gentlemen. If you have anything in your mouths, if you're eating or drinking, <laughs> you want to stop right now. Uh, uh, I oh. love this headline. This is the best headline that has ever happened. I say that a lot, but this really is. Rhode Islanders. Call police, repeatedly call cops over 12 foot snow penis. Look at oh, that kid. this story takes me back. That kid is so proud of himself. Well, he should be. I mean, it, it's it's a winter tradition. It's you are very, very lucky you have if you have that much snow to make that kind of sculpture. I mean, I, I had some friends who did it in high school, and it was a glorious, glorious moment for all of us. Well, you need snow of one kind or another to do something like yeah, that. Yeah, it's, it's, you know, it has to pack well and stack well, obviously. Yeah. Very um, Really well. Load-bearing um, snow. Yeah. Uh, the townsfolk in South Kingstown, Rhode Island, were none too happy this week to discover one of their neighbors built a 12-foot-tall sculpture of a penis out of snow in clear view of the neighborhood road. Uh, police told Providence Journal they responded to the calls about the phallic creation four different times in two days, but did nothing because it was on private property. Of course, it didn't have to be 12 feet tall. When the mother of teenage boys who built the thing saw how people were reacting, she felt like driving the point home a little. They're teenage boys. There's worse things they could be doing. I can't argue with that. It stood for two days. That That's something. That's, you know, a bit of... Neat little uh, engineering. <laughs> They're going to be architects, these kids. Oh, there's even foreskin. It's amazing. There is a oh god! It's it's. I think there's even better picture. Let's let's see. Yeah, there's a bit. There's a better picture. Yes. Look at the loving detail. This but, is like Calvin level stuff. <laughs> it's, oh my god! Oh, I've got to put that up on the big screen. It really is. This is bringing like Calvin and Hobbes flashbacks right now. <laughs> this is what would have happened had Calvin had access 
to porn, this would have happened. <laughs> oh. <sighs> but apparently what happened was um, it was demolished two hours after the story was originally reported. Quote, it's oh. just a big pair of balls now. Mm. That's just sad. I mean, yeah, every, every bit of snow has, you know, off days and... <laughs> Okay, this is the more horrible follow-up. And again, brace you know, Can we stay on this more? I like riffing on this. <laughs> this is easy to riff on. Oh no, we've got a lot of road to cover. And this one... Alright. This is... Kids, brace yourselves. You don't want to look at this picture. West Palm Beach man accused of illegal butt enhancements arrested again. Calvin Butler's accused, accused again after fourth alleged victim comes forward. But the second time in less than a month, a West Palm Beach man has been arrested on the charge he performed. I love the fact that reporters have to type this phrase. Illegal butt enhancements. Calvin Edward Butler, also known as Tamika Butler, was arrested Tuesday after a fourth alleged victim came forward claiming they received illegal butt injections. Um... He uh, he injected silicone into at least two patients' buttocks in a mot at a motel room. Um, against their will? No, they they asked for this. They thought okay. No. okay. Uh, once the, the oh, but they're described as victims. I'm just imagining this guy with a needle running around stabbing people in the butt, making them bigger. <laughs> he likes big butts. He cannot lie. Um. Once the injections were complete, Butler would clean any blood or fluid from the skin and use crazy glue on the incisions. Oh. The woman was charged $200 oh. per injection session. Uh, I gotta ask, did she perform any on, her, on herself? Look at that face! To her face. That, honey, As why? Practice. No, I, I, I'm not going to say any lesbian, gay, bisexual, transsexual. That's not what I'm what I'm concerned about here. This does not look good. This just don't. Honey, why would you do that to yourself? Uh, some people like jowls. Some people just, you know, like jowls, you know. There's a certain dignity that one gains from having large jowls. Jowls? You know. She I don't could, know. She could hide acorns for the winter in those things. Just. <laughs> and the fact that she's not detoured, deterred by the fact she keeps getting arrested. That's a Four calling, I guess. I, you know, and her name is Butler. Of course. Butler. Oh, oh, that just. Oh, oh. oh. Yeah. Oh. Butler. All right. It would only be worse if she legally changed her name to that. Yeah. Uh, shall, shall we have something a little less disgusting? Yeah, let's, yeah moving on. But let, let's do something where, where the world... Can we move away from the, from the pelvic area? Oh, yeah. Because we've got you know, a dick and an ass. But you know, you got to move somewhere else, some other part of the body. Today, th this story is one of those things that it had to happen. This is sort of like... A million monkeys typing on a million typewriters. That's and you eventually what, get Shakespeare. Kind of. I wouldn't call this Shakespeare, but I will call it beautiful. Man steals donut truck, leads cops on chase. That is the plot to Much Ado About Nothing, actually. <laughs> it's in the Apocrypha. <laughs> A lot of it was changed during the uh, the second folio. <laughs> this is this is one of the this is kind of one of those inevitable things. It had to happen somewhere, someday. All right, the guy who wrote this article. Now those are some hot donuts. Tyler Estep at the Gwinnett Daily Post. This is from Georgia. Be ashamed <laughs> of yourself. Those are some hot donuts, Tyler. 
You? It's structured as a joke, but not the actual, you know, filling of it. No, it's, it's just... It, Gwinnett authorities say a Lawrenceville man boosted a Krispy Kreme truck from a Dacula gas station last week, making off with untold quantities of glazed goodness and leading sheriff's deputies on a high-speed chase across the county. Police said a Krispy Kreme delivery man was dropping off his wares at a gas station. That's when James Freddie Major, uh, 45, alleged donut fiend, Tyler, stop. Stop, Tyler. Stop. Showed up and fled in the box truck. The driver stated that the mail had approached him before he entered the store to start his delivery. Within about five minutes, a sheriff's office canine unit and later a few police officers had located the truck. Uh, they tried to pull him over, but he wasn't having it. The vehicle then sped up on the interstate and failed to yield to our visual and audible signals to pull over. Suspect then exited the interstate and uh, made a left turn. He then eventually crashed the damn thing into a mailbox and then tried to run away, which I never understand. <laughs> How they think that's going to work. They crash it into something and then, well, I'm going to run. Mmm, Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> <laughs> I, had, had, I had to go there. There had to be some kind of Simpsons thing in there. So now that that's out of the way, uh, maybe it was just available. He was just running for some other reason, just the only thing that was there, because I play Grand Theft Auto, and that has happened to me. <laughs> like the nearest thing, where the, like the nearest thing is a golf cart, and you have to get into that and run away. Or, um... You just got your mission, something. you just want to fucking get there. Okay, this vehicle will yeah. work, yeah. Vehicle unlocked. Uh, Krispy Kreme truck. Uh, there's an achievement there somewhere. I, you know, I just gotta imagine the other people on the highway watching this happen, and they're just going... No fucking way. No. Did, did honey Another get the phone, camera? Take a picture. Yes. No fucking way. And yeah, <laughs> DA Scott in the channel put it r rightly. This was where his plan fell through. Stealing donuts from cops might as well steal raw meat from lions. Oh. Damn it, I should. I wish that had come to me first. <laughs> they had it's so obvious. They had incentive. To catch your ass. Because you know like at the Greyhound track with that little rabbit rizzing around a track and all the dogs are You're the bunny. It's a Keystone Cop segment right there. No, <laughs> not even Keystone Cop. Like it's some like Saturday morning cartoon. <laughs> at that moment, you just expect the heavens to part and suddenly the Betty Hill theme blazes <laughs> down. Upon all of creation. Played by the entire Heavenly Choir. Yes. On their finest. Now you have to do the you're gonna have to record that whole thing at some point. You you you've opened the floodgates on that one. Yeah, in full men's choral arrangement. Yeah. You know, put together a harmony. Yes. Everyone in the channel thinks this is a counterpoint. Turn it into a fugue or something. Okay. Now, I've we've had people who've gone into public and started waving around weaponry, guns, swords, chainsaws, knives, all sorts of shit. This guy probably has done the geekiest of all of these things that I've, I've ever seen, and I'm almost a little proud of him. Man accused of waving Klingon sword in a Fort Lauderdale intersection. Fort Lauderdale man named Johnny Blade is wi accused of, quote, wildly swinging a multiple edged four foot long sword used by Klingon characters on the Star Trek TV series as he stood in the middle of a residential intersection. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, his name is Johnny Blade. That's not a Klingon name at all. <laughs> <laughs> this There's not nearly enough phlegm in it to be Klingon. Uh, OK. The, B, the the Broward County the the Broward County Sheriff's Office from Florida actually wrote this in the report, which is why this is kind of amazing. This is from an actual police report. "Quote: The sword is known to loyal Star Trek fans as a traditional Klingon batleth or sword of honor." There's a geek in that police office. We know our own. We know our own. 
Okay, so <clears throat> theories. Why was he in the intersection, and why was he swinging the sword? I mean, just spitballing ideas. Um, was he trying to fight the cars? Um, no, 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 no. He had to let the, the spirits of the underworld know that a Klingon warrior was approaching. Ah, oh, okay. That's, yeah. <laughs> Few people are going to get... I am such a geek. Shut up, shut up. I'm a Trekkie, shut up. Ah. Uh, and now he fights in the Black Fleet. In his possession, 20 grams of cannabis, disorderly intoxication in public space and causing a disturbance, and resisting an officer without violence. I wouldn't want to be that cop walking up to that guy. Because I'm just okay. going, man, no, uh-uh, you do it. No, where's the new guy? Get him to do it. Because <laughs> there's nothing screams crazy like a guy with a Star Trek sword in intersection. It, it, but what I love, I is can't it, say anything. I'm out. I'm well, done. Why? I can't think of anything to top just the situation. Kapla, kapla. I'll well, see now. You got to get all the the phlegmy going there. To kapla. <laughs> Tapach Tabech. That's to be or not to be in Klingon. Don't ask me how I know that. What are you from Jerusalem, Kronos? Or. <laughs> Little. <sighs> I'm like, the people in the, the. Now, what I know is when I put this up on the site, people in the comment section are just going to skewer me. No, if I, actually, that's not exactly how the Klingon thing works. You don't understand it. They're just. I'm just waiting for it. Well, why are we criticizing this guy for not being proper Klingon-esque? I mean, was he was he in full costume? No, he wasn't. Well, that that's your first problem there. He's he just, just didn't. He just didn't commit to it. He's out there. He's has half a costume, and that's just that's just awful. That's awful performance art. You would never get an NEA grant for that. Although the very fact that that could happen. Yeah, the NEA does fund some mm. weird ass shit sometimes. Mm. This is this next one's from Canada and it's from the Department of Obvious Stupid is Obvious. Um, man drives drunk to police station to pick up friend. Police in Labrador said Friday they arrested a 32-year-old man for drunk driving just outside a detachment. The man from Shishatshu? Shishatshu. 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 Damn, Canada. He drove to the police station <laughs> just after midnight Tuesday to pick up a friend, here comes the irony, who had been arrested earlier for alcohol-related crimes. The driver had twice the legal limit of alcohol in his system. Shishatshu. Home of Schnee Schnoss Schnappy. The first thing I thought when I heard this story was like, the McKenzie brothers are back. Who? Oh, wow. You just had a terror moment, dude. Second City Television, Bob and Doug McT um, McKenzie, Strange Brew. Help me out. Oh, wow. I <laughs> Wait, did I just commit a faux pas? <laughs> nah, it's... Um, was I supposed to do some reading for this uh, guest? Because you didn't mention anything. You didn't. You mentioned nothing. You hoser. All right. Uh, McKenzie. Wait. Is this a Kids in the Hall thing? No. No. It's older. Far older. It's a. It's a rich uh, and storied tradition of sketch comedy. Okay. I. This is embarrassing. All right. Can, can I like do twenty questions? Um. Okay, Canadian, their names are Mackenzie. Um, help me out. Second City Television. Late 70s, okay. early 80s. I was not even alive then. I wasn't alive in, this, in the, the, the fucking 1800s, and yet I fucking know about classical music. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm being an asshole. That's my yes, you are. Yes, I am. Now I have shame. You have given me shame. 
We're getting off the top. I hope you're proud of that. Because I hope that your pride is now swelled because you've taken all of mine. Back to the... We're, we're, Back to the thing. Come Guy on, drives drunk. Come on. Police station. There you go. I, I just... Yeah. It, how did that... Your guy, if your friend calls you drunk and says, hey, man, I'm arrested, you come get me. All right, girl, I'll pick you up. Let me get on this thing. <laughs> hey, I got a friend here. Let me get it. Uh, this is one of those things. What? What are these cuffs doing on my hand all of a sudden? <laughs> it's one of those self-evident things, man. I don't know. I've been very drunk, and yet this still would have occurred to me at some point. No, actually, no. I take that back. It probably would have occurred to me after I'd done it, I'd stop, I think, and I would be drunk and laughing at myself. That's what would yeah. happen. Delayed reaction. We have two more this week. Both are Florida. Oh, one, good. One is for me. And one is for you. Okay. <laughs> this is, again, I, we're competing for greatest headlines ever this week. I dare you to be Florida woman arrested after genital kicking spree. <laughs> Manti County Sheriff's <laughs> Office got the call that a woman was standing. It's the on- word spree. It's yes. the word spree. <laughs> <laughs> just, imagine this cartoon woman running around, just, you know, legs akimbo and, you know, whack, 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 whack. You know, like some, like they put the red shoes on fast forward. <laughs> whack. <laughs> standing on a street in broad daylight kicking strangers in the genitals they sent an uh, and they sent an unlucky deputy to investigate <laughs> okay wearing a cup <laughs> <laughs> so this yeah that's that's a hobby there <laughs> Uh, is it a hobby if it's a spree? I mean, that might just be like a phase, like um, oh. a binge, a genital kicking binge. There, there's no. Yeah. That that's one of those things. But men have this weird, weird thing, and we're all wired this way. I think it's genetic. It's at the base level. We immediately anyone with with you if you're within like any sort of like ten feet, fifty feet of a nut shot. Here is your inevitable response. Oh, and then, and then <laughs> yeah. always, always, you cannot help it. It's in our DNA. It's evolutionary. It's just a defense mechanism. <laughs> I, I'm, what I'm sad is there's it's no, like the male equivalent. It's like the male equivalent of the dormitory effect. Uh, like, the what? The dormitory effect where, um, Supposedly, if you have a group of women, they're they're cycle synchronized. Oh, yeah. It's, yeah, it's the male version. Only ours is stupid. Yeah. yeah. OK, this last one. Kyle, I'm sorry. All right, I'm braced. I'm ready to go. Ooh, all over again. I'm sorry, Kyle. I just um, this. Th- it, it Don't just... apologize. Just laying on me. OK, just. You reviewed that damn movie. That was a pig. They're totally different animals. I mean, yeah, they're both ungulates, but they're different animals. It's the same legal statute. It's (laughs) an emotion obtained by Ocala.com and filed with Marion County Court. Carlos Romero's attorneys argue that the state's anti-bestiality law deprives Romero of his, quote, personal liberty and autonomy when it comes to private intimate activities. Romero's lawyers said the statute, the statute <laughs> violates their client's due process right and equal protection clause under the 14th Amendment of the United States Constitution. Is that donkey protected? I honestly don't know. Not a constitutional lawyer, but is that donkey protected? Well, dad ass. Uh, oh, oh, yes. Oh. Yes, I went there. Yes. 
You're dead. I so donkey fucking. <clears throat> All right. Um, any lawyers in the audience? Do you have a case? <laughs> 14th Amendment. Equal protection. Mm -hmm. 32-year-old previously rejected a plea deal that would have required a year probation, $200 fine, a psychosexual evaluation, and possible treatment. STD testing. No yeah. contact with children in a private school, in a school setting. No ownership or possession of any mammals. <laughs> and revocation would, of his, Yeah, that makes sense. Revocation of his license to work in <laughs> horse racing. <laughs> <laughs> And you know what? The best ear thing. Flicka. Ear flicker. Ear The best thing about this is the mugshot. I gotta get the mugshot up there on the screen. He's so happy. That is the happiest donkey fucker I have ever seen in my well, he's life. Not, okay, he's not a little gleeful. He's he's content. He's just, you know. Afterglow? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't want to think about this picture like the before and after, like what <laughs> happened immediately before and immediately after this picture. Just let's just focus on the picture. This moment, this uh, capture moment in time, just that is contentment. This is a guy who is just happy with the, the choices that he has made. And do you or I have the right to deny? I will say that in all seriousness, this story. Lawyers yeah. are bastards, man. <laughs> Because they will come up with any fucking way to win. D motherfucker. 14th Amendment. 14th Due Process and Equal Protection Clause. <sighs> so I guess the first thing we learned tonight is that lawyers. Fucking lawyers, man. Mm hmm. I just <laughs> they're getting creative now with this shit. I swear. That poor donkey. Where's the donkey's <laughs> lawyer? <laughs> yes. Where the fuck is the donkey's lawyer? Um was one provided for him if he, if he could not provide one himself? Show us on uh, the tall where the man touched you. One clop for yes, two clops for no. <laughs> <laughs> My client pleads he awesome. <laughs> oh god. All right, Awful. all right, all right. We're um, <clears throat> We learned tonight that making giant penis statues out of snow is becoming a thing. Mm hmm. And you know what? There there have been worse trends. No, I it. It's a it's an expression of your of one's expression stuff. And that is a damn good sentence. I will stand by that sentence. <clears throat> I you know what? It's still more dignified than Crocs. Yes. Always. And if it does become a trend, I will happily support that. If dicks, you know, sprout up all over America through the snow, that I will defend their right to dick with the snow. Oh, that Jeez. that wasn't that was I don't think that counted as a joke. Dick with I the think snow. To make a dick to snow dick to. um. Well, let's just make it a verb. It's going to become a thing. Snow dick. Today, I went snow digging with my friends today. <laughs> I remember those times when we were kids and we went out snow dicking in the park. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, my God. This needs to be a word now. Oh, God. This needs to be a fucking word now. <laughs> This is and people in the channel are going, this is amazing. Like that little kid in the Incredibles. That was amazing. <laughs> um Ah, oh, those cold New England nights. 
How's the children to come in for a long day of snow dicking? <laughs> I remember coming home for a hot cup of Campbell's soup after a long day of snow dicking. <laughs> remember what when we done? used to make sticks in the snow? Pepperidge Farms remembers. <laughs> Uh, oh, we're just okay, Laniel in the chat. You two are just dicking around now. Yes. Oh. Uh, we learned that sometimes the stars will align, and comedy mm -hmm. will happen organically. When the moon is bright and the stars are are right, <laughs> <laughs> and an idiot steals a donut truck. On that day, on that day. The composer of Yakety Sax will look down upon all of us and smile. We've learned that. We've learned that if you just say kicking someone in the genitals, it's not as compelling as a genital kicking spree because spree makes it. Spree mm. just makes a whole thing. It makes it fun, makes it gleeful, and you know. <sighs> what else do we learn? We are two grown-ass men laughing about penises on the internet. <laughs>